And now for Maryland Perspective on American Graduate Day, we are joined by Dr. Lillian Lowry, Maryland's new superintendent of schools. Dr. Lowry, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. You have been a classroom teacher at the middle school level, the high school level. You've run school districts, state school systems. What perspective does all of that give you on this issue? The perspective is firsthand uh, knowledge based on the student and parent perspective and the kinds of things that teachers and leaders at schools need to do to make sure that we're engaging students and making them feel that graduation is a key aspect of their future endeavors. So having the spectrum from one who works directly with students and hearing what kinds of concerns and challenges that could facilitate such a negative choice and then being able to provide the people who actually work with them every day with the resources they need to engage them is um, a, an experience that I've learned over the years. I wonder in, in your classroom experiences if you ever came across somebody who was at risk, who because of whatever factors went one way or the other succeeded or, or, or didn't. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things that we can do now, because we have so many more resources, rather than students just sitting in a traditional classroom and gleaning and sharing knowledge, with virtual opportunities, with online opportunities, with credit recovery programs, we can walk away from some of the traditional settings for some of our students and offer more opportunities for them to gain the knowledge that they need in settings that are more conducive to their learning styles. How do some of those things work? For, for people who aren't familiar with, you call it a credit recovery? Right. For example, we have some high school students for whom the traditional model just doesn't work. And so if they want to um, take courses that are going to keep them engaged, like uh, career and technical education courses, science, technology, engineering courses, how can then they access their core curricular subjects? We have twilight programs where students can come after the school day, um, after doing internships um, in the areas that they really enjoy to make those credit um, opportunities available to them has been a huge benefit to them. For those who get behind, sometimes in the ninth grade year, and I say to students all the time when they're freshmen in high schools, um, you're really going to have to make sure that you make good decisions because three years from now it could come back and be an impediment. Sometimes they still do. And so we have opportunities where they can make up those hours, those units in other ways instead of staying in school years longer to get the credits that they need to get graduation requirements completed. Another uh, potential approach to the problem is, is changing the uh, compulsory attendance age. Mm -hmm. I know uh, the president has mentioned that in the State of the Union address, and Maryland is looking at it as well. Absolutely. Maryland has already um, passed legislation for compulsory attendance age to be um, elevated from age 16 to 18, and that is going to be of great benefit. It certainly will uh, compel the educators to look with a finer point to our students and where they are um, and what the attendance does to ensure that they will be successful in graduating from high school. What do you expect to happen to, to those kids? So you have somebody who um, probably isn't going to want to be there. Right. Well, I think that's a challenge for the educator. Um, we've all been teenagers before, and some days we like things better <laughs> than others. So what kinds of creative programming can we offer to them that would compel them to want to be in school every day, um, gleaning that knowledge? And we have opportunities to entice them in many different ways with the kind of creative curricula that we can offer. Um, so that's a challenge that we take on. Uh, we just have to make sure that we are listening to our students and giving them what they need. What's the impact of the move towards high-stakes testing? Uh, in Maryland, we have the, the uh, HSAs, high school assessments, um, required for, for graduation. Do, do certain kids see it as more of a barrier than other kids? To be quite honest with you, um, it can be a barrier for some other kids um, as opposed to other groups because some come to school more ready to learn and with a better background um, knowledge development. However, I believe it is the way we present things to students. Um, if we tell them this is an opportunity, 
that we're going to work side by side with them to ensure their success. They will depend on us to give them the support that they need to be successful. So the high stakes tests certainly are there, but the environment that we create around those assessments and how we prepare students for them can help shape how they think about them. Does curriculum play a role in this as well? Because you've been in that situation as at one point a student and then a teacher in, in high school situations. Um, the world has changed in so many ways. Technology, uh, are we keeping pace with what's going to hold the kids' attention? We are certainly um, working to keep pace. Uh, things change very rapidly. There are all kinds of new technologies out there. Um, and as I've traveled across the state, there are some districts that have been a little more progressive than others, but we are certainly working to bring that to scale. The curriculum can be um, implemented in many different ways. We have different ways of having children access the curriculum. So um, we, we, we're being really creative about the work and how we impart the work um, for the students and the teachers to ensure that the curriculum is being implemented with fidelity. Kids still want to know why we have to learn algebra, though. <laughs> I know. Students still want to learn algebra. Um, I, they tell me every day how much they love it. No, really, um, it is a basic skill, and um, we have creative ways of making it a little more interesting for them. Dr. Lowry, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it. And you were watching American Graduate Day on MPT.